afternoon and welcome to Mesa Community College Art Gallery. My name is Carlos Herrera. I'm the uh, curator for this exhibition. And uh, I'm going to introduce you to Melissa Smedley, who's the artist, and she will explain uh, her artwork to you. So if you have any questions, um, you may want to ask after she's explained some of the pieces, or one piece, and moving on to the next. So, Melissa Smedley. Thank you for coming. Just to begin, uh, para tools, the title, the prefix para means all about or all around. So my title means all about tools. And the purpose of it is to perhaps make you um, take a second look at all the gadgets and doohickeys and thingamabobs and appliances and tools that you use on a daily basis to, to uh, mediate your relationship to the world and to nature. So uh, I'll just start by doing a run through of these objects and for some of them where they came from. This, um, the bread slippers here are actually very, very comfortable, <laughs> especially when they're fresh out of the oven. They have, you know, kind of cushions your heel, smells good, um, perhaps a bit wasteful, but you know, this is a comfort, recreation-oriented culture that you're in here. Um, I originally thought that they could be good for those day trader people who just sit in their bathrobe at their computer all day and uh, they don't want to miss something and so they just, you know, reach out at <laughs> But um, I've also done a lot of performances with some sculptures that I have made and I've made many things that are strapped onto my own body, various kinds of footwear. Um, things that I do perform with, and these will probably have another life um, in a performance where there's flower on the floor. So you can picture that. Um, so also, I'm talking about how these words are selling us things all day long. Our billboards, the catalogs we get in the mail. Words define things, and so you start to believe it. Sure, that's a kit. I could do that. Um, here's another uh, tool that is in the research and development phase. And um, this is the mouse that knows. <laughs> <laughs> of course, um, what it will eventually do is, is sniff for you, kind of a gatekeeper could be very useful in your in your web searching. So we'll, um, you know, the technicalities, a couple clickers and some sniff noise, and you could have maybe a, a mouse that would feel better in your hand. So, um, browser, this is portal number one, and as you can see, we have a very important data plug here, and the other portal goes all the way around the gallery to the other pedestal. So these uh, portals are speaking to each other right now. Okay, now we'll move into the kitchen area. And here in the kitchen, we have a um, earthquake detector kit. As you know, um, here in California, we are due. We have been due for at least 10 years. I've lived here for 10 years, and they said it then, and they say it now. So um, I did uh, have done several artworks that involve insects, and um, I just think they're so interesting. And we're just children compared to them. I mean, they've been here on Earth for billions and billions of years, much longer than us. We're just recent inventions, us humans. So um, since ants hear through vibration, through the substratum, uh, they, of course, are much more in tune to any movement in the earth. So um, we have them here. You can eat your breakfast and watch the ants. And you're no longer there with your Chinese chalk, little piles of 
comet uh, spraying things on them to get ants out of your kitchen. Mm -hmm. Here in this kitchen, you're cohabitating with the ants, enjoying their company <laughs> and not fighting the problem. You are living in harmony with ants that are helping you. And of course, there's some educational displays here. Um, we have some, um, this is the, the socket where the antenna fits, <coughs> fits onto the ant's head and that is the area of the most sensitivity where the ant can pick up the tremors. Um, yes, and, and of course, some mementos that you would have in your kitchen, of course, if you had subscribed to this lifestyle in which ants are part of your, your daily life. Um, moving, moving right along here to another tool. Um, right here is the pocket sickle, and this, of course, uh, is also in the uh, research and development phase, but it will be coming in this, this uh, lovely packaging here. Um, what we have here is uh, a blade, the shape that we developed when people first began harvesting grain. And the first um, sickles were from animal jaws. So that shape that you see in farm implements originally came from making a tool out of an animal jaw. And uh, this becomes a longer story, but this was a commission to do an edition of 50. Um, and I took this opportunity to learn how to cast something, so this is why we have these um, units that look the same. Um, and now uh, I'm learning um, how to sharpen it. But the idea of this is, um, I found it very interesting, this whole Y2K thing, which showed that people actually are quite paranoid about what might happen if their dependence on computers was, was suddenly disrupted. And I think that it's very interesting culturally that uh, it brought up issues about people trying to hold on to things. They didn't um, want to give up what they have. Um, but uh, I like playing with the idea of, um, of a culture that is maybe not exactly post post-apocalyptic, but playing with the idea that uh, we may sometime need to sort of fend for ourselves, that we live a very comfortable existence um, here in the quote-unquote first world, and there's many other people who are using tools like this to survive, although this is more of a, a joke on it, really. This is um, kind of a takeoff on a Swiss Army life, knife. Um, but anyway, those are some of the issues that come to mind around this tool. But it's, uh, as I mentioned, ideal for roadside foraging. So <laughs> if things get really bad, you can, um, you know, just walk along, find some dandelion greens, maybe some wheatgrass. Um, just what do we need to survive and how do we survive in our culture? Um, and how would we survive if things changed radically? Um, right here, we have the um, Grow Your Own Cellular Phone Kit. And um, of course, it comes with the miraculous genuflect fertilizers. <laughs> of course, if you've ever done any gardening. Um, this is uh, an attempt to just get off the grid, per se, which means um, also brings up our dependence on so many different systems. We pay our bills to the AT&T, the Sprint PCS, all these large uh, corporations that actually have a lot of control over us. So um, not only am I interested in the play of language about ears and ears, um, but um, I'm also interested in making people think about um, the genetic manipulation of plants. Um, you know, uh, things, things are getting very strange 
out here. So this is, is really not so far-fetched. Someone's is ringing right now, you see? <laughs> and they're going to pay for it. <laughs> so um, these phones, yes, they should be available in, in um, April 2000. <laughs> uh, I'm talking to Monsanto about it. And uh, here is the Portal 2, the uh, chooser. <laughs> and um, we borrowed some lipstick so that uh, she looked real nice. I think we better freshen it up. So, you know. But um, again, this tool that you may take for granted, you just click your way through school, you click your way through your Christmas shopping. Um, you know. How about some other designs? Why couldn't they be pets? Um, so that is the other portal and the speaking to the nose, who knows? Choosing and knowing you've got it, you got it covered. Um, let's go over to some more footwear here. These, um, these American slippers, just, uh, they accidentally came together on the floor of my studio. I had gone off to do something, came back a few days later, and these materials got close to each other. And then they just, they couldn't see without becoming united. So um, these are actually sunflower stalks from my garden. We grew a lot of sunflowers and they're ex extremely strong, these stalks, but um, I just like this image uh, for our culture which is full of these root balls that we take with us and we put new places and then we try to regrow and um, everyone sort of has a history or um, something that they came with and um, to me this pair of slippers just um, is an, is, an, is an attempt to make a poetic visual statement that might make you wonder about roots. And um, now we'll go to the bathroom area. These um, incredible edible teeth are also um, a little bit related to wondering how far we are going to go in our culture. What, what would we, we be left with? Um, how, how strange are things going to get? But um, the idea of edible teeth, um, it just it makes me laugh. A lot of these things are simply for fun. I, um, some people's idea of making art is much more full of angst. But at this moment, um, I'm interested in making things that are, that do probe into our culture, but that are um, for amusement. But these um, incredible edible teeth, of course, have um, some Play-Doh and cherry jello gums, <laughs> and um, of course, the ornamental corn teeth. Um, they were actually made by my son's dentist, who, uh, has an office on, in North Park on 30th Street, and he makes whirly gigs. He got bored with dentistry. He does that and just um, makes things. He's got a fish tank with a jaw in it that moves that you can watch while you're having your teeth cleaned. And so when I asked him to do this project, he, he was just delighted. So he's maybe kind of a kindred spirit, this man. But I think that he also has a really good name, Dr. Knott, um, for the play on words. Uh, of course, here's the tooth chart that uh, you don't usually get to see. They keep that in your file, you know. But these incredible edible teeth are here to um, just make you take a second look at your own jaw, I guess. But um, I've watched them and they also laugh and talk and chat and things when no one's looking and then when someone looks then they just start 
so uh, you might want to check back on them. <laughs> and um, in the center of the room here, there is, um, of course, our steering wheel cover. Um, let's see here. I've been meaning to get some new Sage air freshener. This um, steering wheel cover is a talisman. Many of these things I consider talismans, which are uh, somewhere between a good luck charm and um, a souvenir. But this is a good luck charm for highway driving. And um, this is actually cast in latex. Uh, um, this particular one is my knuckles and my husband's knuckles. You can see our, our wedding rings here. Um, but this kit allows you to cast the knuckles of your own family so that you can drive along and just hold on tight. You know? um, and this actually was done uh, using some more dental equipment, which is um, when the dentist does a casting of your teeth, if they have to do something, it's this stuff called alginate. It takes a very accurate impression. That's what I did the casting of the knuckles with. Um, I have a lot of dentists in my family, and that may be why these teeth showed up too, is uh, four or five generations of dentistry in my father's family. Anyway, this will protect you. Plus, you can light the sage and just drive along in your own cloud, um, protected down the highway. Um, so, of course, get a grip on your um, mirror is always helpful too. So uh, these shovels in the middle are um, also works that may have happened while I wasn't in my studio. I just came back and these things got together. Um, just um, in playing with tools and sculpture, I'm um, all, always altering the handles of things. And uh, this, this shovel has also been used in a performance before, but this is the latest handle. Um, I'm interested in collisions of so-called man-made materials and natural materials, um, because they all started with natural materials. As you see, the sickle was coming from an animal jaw. Um, but these were gourds, that, uh, bottle gourds that we grew. And uh, my neighbor works at the zoo. She's a reptile expert, and she keeps boa constrictors in her house. She saves the skins for me. Um, and then they just, some decoupage thing happened here. That's why these look like this. But the idea of um, excavating, I feel, is, is uh, a spiritual thing. It's a metaphor for looking, probing, wondering, digging, plowing, uncovering layers. And I feel that's something that we need to do in our personal lives and in our spiritual lives and in our artistic practices. So these um, are sort of visual puns that are accidents that happen in my studio. Right here, this uh, thousand-year-old egg was um, once in the form of a coiled pot that was egg-shaped. And I had corn, which shows up in many things. Corn was stuck in it. And I left it in my studio, and some animal came to eat the corn kernels. And as they ate it, they just left it in this state, which, which I like with the little chew parts. <laughs> so um, the thousand year old egg is, is kind of, um, it may be a one of a kind. <laughs> Even though this says that it comes with a thousand year old egg, I'm not sure that I could reproduce that. So um, this is the, the stories on the paratools here. And if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. And for people that are interested in getting further into what I've done before as an artist um, or just learning more, I will be showing uh, a couple of videos from some of my past work. So um, does anyone have any questions about the pair tools? Do you 
you have other exhibits besides these? With the power tools? Is this the only, the only pieces you have to this exhibit? Well, um, this exhibit was uh, finished last week. And um, I'm always working on this theme of tools, so I have other things that I'm working on. Um, and I'll be part of an exhibition that opens um, next week <laughs> um, at the Museum of Contemporary Art downtown. Um, and I'll be showing some more tool-like things there and um, a series called Delivery Vehicles. Um, so those will be on exhibit soon. Um, this is one of the few exhibitions that I've had that does not involve video. And I really want to concentrate on object making um, more than performing with them or uh, the other aspects. Also, the reason that this blue sky is here is um, just to immerse you in a feeling of almost a Pollyanna Americana. Um, Pollyanna is uh, maybe a long story, but something that seems very, very happy and simple. But perhaps when you look at the tools, they are um, bizarre and complex. So it's there for um, a contrast, surprise, and to create a whole en environment to immerse you in this world and to let the tools speak to each other back and forth. If you take all that away and you just look at white walls and you put the same objects there, um, it's a very different environment. So I'm interested in um, creating a whole world when I make these tools. Just one doesn't do it. I need a pair of tools, several pairs. Any other questions? Lucio, um, looking at the shoes on top of the roots, I'm really thinking about the, in a sense, rootlessness sometimes of our society. And, and they really looked like they were pulled, you know, dramatically out of the ground there with that big ball at the end. And, and the red even kind of symbolizes to me a very kind of a fantasy uh, because, you know, red shoes are kind of special in uh -huh. some way. Uh -huh. uh, and it, it, it almost reminds me of Dorothy and those red shoes in The Wizard of Oz. And but what it says to me, and this is, maybe I'm, I'm completely off, and I'll ask you if I'm kind of getting an idea here that you might have floated around in your mind too, that we, we really uproot ourselves quickly in American society. We move all over the place, just like nomads practically, for business, for a dream. As so many people come here to California, find out how difficult it is sometimes here, and then move back to where they came from or move somewhere else. Some of us stay and stick around. I've been here about 20 years now. But it's always interesting to me how transient the area is. The military here moves people about every four years. Your neighbors come and go like mad. It's nothing like the Midwest, where I originated in. And it probably nowhere is. My husband said, oh, don't be thinking if we move back to the Midwest, you'll have neighbors that stick around. And you'll get to know people and get friendships that last long, long years, you know. Mm -hmm. That's probably. Um, in our past and maybe won't ever be again in our future as a society and as a world? Well, that's basically why I like to make art is because uh, I create a visual pun and people think their own thoughts about them. So whatever you bring to it is entirely valid. Mm -hmm. As I told you, that sculpture practically made itself. So it wasn't a particularly deliberate thing on my part. I just knew that I felt there was a lot of poetry in that collision of objects. So I just went with it. But I know that um, those are very, very valid observations. Any other questions? Are any of these photographs like for sale or, or no, like in cards or just? Oh, uh, I'd love to make some money. <laughs> Postcards, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, we'll work on that. I brought my camera.
postcards, sure, that would be good. I travel a lot and I see art in all, all forms. And one of the ways that I do bring it back home because some of it is so expensive is via postcards. Yes. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's just mm -hmm. interesting. Good idea. Yeah. Have postcards will travel. Are postcards. the photos allowed? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Put her on the spot there. <laughs> um, I actually plan to make a book uh, with these objects. So there'll be photographs and some writings and uh, kind of furthering some of the scientific data for the earthquake detector kit, for instance. I have whole folders of um, plausible information, but for the purpose of making a clean looking exhibition, I can't uh, show all that. So I want to make a book that um, makes this sort of live on, and uh, we'll see what happens with that.